Hello everyone, Saqib Khan here from the Spanimation Bridge and Seismic School. I had mentioned in one of my previous conversations to you about the acceleration response spectrum that I will talk about the displacement response spectrum and how we can obtain it uh, from the acceleration response spectrum. So the geotechnical engineers or the code based procedures really provide us with the smooth design spectrum for acceleration. So on the vertical axis you've got the spectral acceleration in terms of G versus the period on the horizontal axis and it usually has a has a plateau and then it drops off. Uh, so that's the general shape of the acceleration response spectrum. We can assume a sinusoidal uh, behavior for coming up with the maximum displacement spectrum. When we do that, we find that we can determine the displacement spectrum using the acceleration spectrum using the following formula. So when you have calculated the natural period, say it lies over here, we can calculate the spectral acceleration value, we put it into this formula, and we can get an approximation for the SD, or the design displacement spectrum value. So when we examine this formula a little bit closely, we find that as the period increases, the spectral displacement goes up. This is in contrast to what the acceleration spectrum is. So usually with smaller periods or more stiffness, uh, higher frequencies, the acceleration values are high, and then as you become uh, more flexible, the acceleration drops. When we look at this formula, clearly T squared is in the numerator, so as the T goes up, the spectral displacement value goes up. So the SD generally looks like this. It's, it grows linearly to a certain point. Um, now if one were to just stick with this formula, it would grow indefinitely, which does not make physical sense because for a large earthquake you can imagine that uh, the displacement is going to be bounded. Um, if you keep increasing the period, you cannot have unbounded displacement. See, this point cannot just keep growing indefinitely. So a lot of codes uh, especially when they talk about the direct displacement based design, they want to cap this value. So they give you what we call the corner period or TC and beyond that this thing more or less goes flat. So the codes recognize the fact that the spectral displacement cannot grow indefinitely and it grows to a certain point and then as the period goes up uh, you basically cap that. <clears throat> and you can imagine a structure which is very, very flexible. What will happen is the mass at the top will stay put while the ground just moves underneath it. So the maximum displacement it's ever going to experience, the maximum relative displacement, is just going to be equal to the displacement of the ground. And the ground obviously is not going to move in an unbounded fashion. So this is how you can obtain your displacement spectrum. Uh, this can be used in conjunction with pushover analysis for performance-based design. It can also be used for uh, sizing up your members in the direct displacement-based uh, design philosophy. Uh, we will talk about those topics in uh, some of our upcoming videos and uh, give you more details in our upcoming seismic analysis course. Thank you for listening to me and I will speak to you later.